Hi, let's learn some UI path. My name is Anders Jensen and today we will talk about debugging in UI path. Debugging uh, we're using when we need to find out there some potential errors in our process. Let's say that we run the process and then it comes up with an error and we can't uh, spot it right away. Then we will use the debug mode. So uh, let's open a workflow and create a sequence. We will, we could call it like UI path debug example. It's always good practice to rename your activities like I do here. And uh, that's because uh, when exceptions or errors hits, then uh, it usually gives you a name. And if you, if all your activities, all your sequences are named the same, it's quite hard to point to the real, to the problem. So here we will uh, rename it to UI path debug example. Well, that's just as a side note, but uh, and I'm sure uh, you all know. However, um, imagine a sequence, a very complicated sequence, in which a variable will uh, change uh, value uh, sometimes, a lot of times in that process, and we can't really see if it's uh, in the the way we wanted it. So uh, then we can use the debug. Let's uh, create a variable. We call that in count we'll create a count variable the variable type will be an integer and then the default value will be one so our counter will start at one and then it will at first it will just uh, change its value and it will uh, be added by one so it will be in count plus one like this so what happens in this sequence is it start the sequence and then our count uh, and then here the int count will be one, and when this activity is done, then the int count will be two. So uh, let's uh, make a few of them. I'll copy and paste, paste, paste. So we got four. So here it's one, and after this, it's and coming into this activity, it's still one, and having performed this activity, it's two. It's two here before this, and three after, and so on. But let's say uh, that we we don't know because imagine this is a complicated process. So um, and then we want uh, uh, to debug and find out what the value is. For example, here and here. Well, we can tell because it's two and three going out here. It's three and four. It's, the value is four after this, and it's uh, five after this, and six after this, right? So two, three, four, five. Or did I say one? Well, it's two here, three here, four here, five here after, and one less when it's come into that activity. Um, and then we head to debug. There's uh, some possibilities up here. Usually I'll just make uh, use the breakpoints. Uh, that's quite the easiest, uh, that's by far the easiest thing. The slow step is, is rather useless. That lets you run the process like a bit slower. However, um, we'll just use the breakpoints to stop where we want. So let's say that we are, we're not sure about the, what the value of our variable is here and here, or let's say that we might suspect that there's some kind of an error here. Well, it's not, but um, again, imagine that this is a more complicated example. So then we just, uh, when we're here, we just uh, click the uh, breakpoints, or we can click here, toggle breakpoint. It, it's the same because toggle breakpoint is the default. And then we can click here as well. Um, we can even go to the breakpoints here, down here, and then we can uh, see the breakpoints in which uh, that we have uh, assigned. And up here, we can uh, disable, uh, delete all breakpoints. We can enable all breakpoints, or we can disable. So delete will just delete those. Uh, disable will ignore them when the debug is, is has run, and of course, enabling will enable them again. However, let's try to debug this and see what's going on and see how and learn how we can see when the val uh, that the value is changing. So we click debug. It starts like now. And then uh, it flew over this one quite fast. And then it's here. It's going into this. And we can see that the value is 2 here. That's, that was re We expected that because it was 2 when going out of this activity. And then it was 2 going in here. And then it's three going out, and it's three going in here, four going out, it's four going in here, and five going out. And then we click continue, 
And we, we can see that it, it uh, jumped over this because we haven't toggled a breakpoint here and it, uh, there's a breakpoint down here. And we can see uh, here in, in the inspector that uh, the value is now four. This is really useful. And always also useful when we just need to stop the process uh, to uh, when we're suspecting that there might be some errors and we don't run to want to run the entire process. We can um, then continue. We'll stop here and uh, that's it. However, we uh, can delete the breakpoints like this. Delete all breakpoints. Yes. The uh, slow step. Well, that's as I said, quite useless. We won't use that either. We can um, lock the activities, lock what's going on here in the debug mode. However, I rarely use that as well. So uh, breakpoints is the way to go. And now you've seen how you can add breakpoints to your debug. That's it for now. Bye bye.